There to be good interchange. Just sit back and enjoy it, you know. Let them go. Uh, let's see what comes out of it. We're either right or we're wrong. If we're right, the right conclusion is going to be reached. So you let the people make up their own minds, and when people make up their own minds, it stays a lot longer when you made up than when you made up their mind for them. Because if you make up their mind for them and I convince them, you might not be convinced tomorrow. But if you make, if people make up their own minds based on logical conclusions, then you're going to have a lot longer lasting standing information in their own mind and they're going to know why they did it. I'd like to, for each of you to introduce yourselves and what state you're from and that'll conclude it. Wayne, Wayne Mullet, Madison County, Illinois. Dennis Sievers, Wood County, Wisconsin. Wood County, Wisconsin. John Zetchi, Brown County, Minnesota. Daryl Fiddler, Jackson County, Kansas. Ed Asajan, Kings County, California. Barry Schaller, La Crosse County, Wisconsin. Dennis Holcomb, Yuma County, Colorado. Tony Kaiser, Hanson County, South Dakota. Randy Robertson, Ottagami County, Wisconsin. Craig Moriak, Barron County, Wisconsin. Thank you all, and that was a, a good group of people just come out of the audience. Nobody was handpicked. successful for me I hope that you can use it how many of you feel that you could do the same just with people in your area hold up your hands well there's quite a lot of you I think everyone could do it here you don't have a microphone all you have to do is ask number one do you think farmers should organize and then say why do you say that then develop where their strength is it's our production Next, we've got to unite it. And then, if somebody in the group, besides yourself, can give a personal testimony of success of why they like the program, there's one other thing that would come up. Particularly in farmers that you are dealing with or talking to, that maybe went with our programs three years ago, four years or five years ago, and they have been mad ever since because they got paid for a cow instead of a steer or because they got, uh, they got 50 cents under the market or 75 cents under the market. They've never forgotten it. And that's what they're going to come out and tell you. You've covered yourself when I talked to Devon right here by saying there are many changes been made in the organization, particularly in the last year. That's a very important sentence to make because it's true and because that we have the structure that you see a part of and the professionalism that's been added to give us that opportunity to go ahead and complete the job that we started out to do. So I'm going to say in conclusion this. I think it comes down to the point now, do we really think we have to win in order to protect ourselves? Do you that parents that have young farmers, son or daughter on the farm, do you realize that if they don't make it, that grandchild that you may have close by might be moved a long ways away. And in the process, they might even take you down with them as you back them, not because of their fault, but because they can't make a cash flow work 
And it's different now. We used to be able to buck, buck, uh, button up and buckle our belts and, and all, and maybe take $1,000 off of our expenses by cutting it back on our living. But $1,000 today doesn't make much difference anyway, does it? Because of the total costs involved. We have to watch our money. But if you take, uh, you've got somebody with an operating, yearly operating outlay of a million dollars or a half a million or more, or $300,000, you can't button up and buckle your belt enough to save yourselves, can you? The electricity bill alone, in most households and farmsteads today for modern agriculture, is more than it costs to use to put in a crop. And so that's the situation we're in. So we have to decide what value it is to us, and then we have to decide whether or not we want to win. You know, there's not much difference in the physical ability, as I may have said the other night, I've used it a few times. We see 300 football players on the screen. They're not 300 superhuman beings. They're 300 people who have as good a physical ability, maybe, but not. there's more than 300 people in the United States. There's thousands that probably have greater physical ability, maybe tens of thousands, for the particular spot they play. But what is the difference? It was their desire to win. And that's the difference between a professional and an amateur. The desire to win and desire to follow through. And when the going gets rough, some collapse and others build determination. I think everybody in this auditorium, whether it's their first convention or whether they've been to every convention, that we know farmers need to win because nobody else is going to do it. All we're fighting for is a cost of production plus a reasonable profit. And I can tell you I have written commitments from major companies and we are now dealing with practically every major company, the top five in dairy, meat, and grain, hogs, cattle. And we have written commitments and verbal commitments from many of them, either that they will sign cost of production plus reasonable profit contracts, or at least they will negotiate, saying they're not concerned about their price level, it's whether their competitors can buy cheaper. And we've turned it around to where we had to fight the companies for recognition. Now we've gotten it. We've improved our contracts. And now the one thing that we have to have is the production, and that has to come from your work and the efforts of others that are waiting back home for you to report to them. And I hope that you can go back and, in clear conscience with great determination and full belief that we are that close to what we've worked for. And that you can go back with a determination and a clear conscience and will follow through and say we meant August 3rd in Des Moines, Iowa and Farm Power not farm power for me or any other individual, but for the way farmers could build their own farm power with other farmers. That we don't look back, but we look forward with a determination that after March 1st, farmers are not going to be forced off of the land because of an unfair prices and unfair opportunity. It will be a matter of only the efficiency of those 
that are efficient and those that maybe don't like it or are not as efficient. But no longer will we have to fight the fact that we don't at least have equity with the rest of the economy. Not many weeks till March 1st. It's going to take the mobilization of an army of farmers that you represent here. But just 1,000 farmers taking two counties each to be responsible for the young farmers. Working with the young farmers and all the rest of us working with the other things and the people our age or younger, working together separately, but as a team to say, this is our price. This is the price you must pay in order to get your food. Not unjustly, but fair and equitable. There's nothing more that I can say, nothing more that I can do to urge you on I just ask you to think of the consequences not winning comparing with the needs that you have for winning. Never before in the history of agriculture in this nation or throughout the world have farmers had a structure, a capability, and the communication capability of pricing their products. Let's don't pass it by. Let's make every hour count. And let's make March 1st a day that will go down in history, that we had a part of it for fairness and justice for every people, this country, all the people, throughout the world to assure food production by maintaining the youth and agriculture. I'll give all I've got. I'd like to be away for Christmas a week, next week, but I've already promised, as I said before, 10 meetings. I'll make them. Let's go out of here. Let's go back home. And let's each one get five more and then get those to get five more each. And March 1st will be that day that we're entitled to. Let's go and let's do it. Thank you.